Shelly Seitz joins us now with a special in-depth look. Shelly? Yeah, Lindsay, there is so much information thrown our way concerning our diets, not only how much we're eating, but what we are eating. What's in our food? Where did it come from? Is it really all natural? I wanted to find out, and so I went straight to the experts, our area farmers. The High Plains is an agricultural hotspot. Many residents across the Panhandles and eastern New Mexico are making their living by growing, harvesting, and distributing food, whether that be corn, beans, wheat, beef, chicken, fruit, or other vegetables. David Peckinpah has been a local farmer for many years and has fed his family the fruit of his labor. He stands by his produce. Every time I'm dumping a load of corn or whatever at the elevator, at my elevator, I have a tendency to pick up a handful of it and chew it up and eat it. So I do, I eat my own wheat, my own corn, my own soybeans, and it tastes good. Farming nowadays is not the farming of old with horses and plows, men in the fields pulling weeds, farmers simply hoping and praying that insects don't plague or eat the crops. Nope, science now plays a role in the successful production of most crops. Much of what we eat on a daily basis has come from a genetically modified organism, or a GMO. Big biotech companies have um, altered our food to have two different traits is what they're finding. One is herbicide resistance, the other is pesticide production. So basically they can spray massive amounts of pesticide or herbicides on your plant and your crop will still grow, or it's got an internal pesticide where the bugs will eat it and the bugs actually burst and die. Peckinpah says that GMOs have played a large role in the success of his business. Genetics has been put into, into plants to make them resist herbicide and insects. Uh, it has is, totally changed the way farming has gone the last few days or, or the last few years and, and I think we'll do so in the future. What, what genetically modified uh, inserts that have gone into the plant have done have been have been to allow farmers to use less in, insecticides and herbicides that we once had to use to protect our for, to protect our crops. Peck and Paul goes on to say that the genetically modified crops do a better job of resisting weeds and insects, and that the nation's farmers have become very reliant on that technology. Farmers used to be happy with 180 bushels of corn but now they can expect 240 when it comes time to harvest. The genetics that's in the plant is protecting that plant from from disease and insects and and uh, it's it's a it's a it's a more vibrant plant produces higher yields. Not everyone is happy about genetically modified food and that's where organic farming comes in. Well I first became interested in organic farming uh, over 20 years ago and when I did, I bought books and started to educate myself and just became convinced that growing without uh, the use of pesticides and herbicides was the way that I wanted to produce food. It, at the time, it just seemed like uh, it was healthier and that's what I wanted to be able to provide. Now a recent study was conducted by Stanford University that concluded the published literature lacks strong evidence that organic foods are significantly more nutritious than conventional foods but it goes on to say quote consumption of organic foods may reduce exposure to pesticide residues and antibiotic resistant bacteria. So while both forms of farming produce a nutritious and delicious product, an organic diet may keep you from eating foods that have been sprayed with pesticides and that may have antibiotic resistant bacteria. Now part two of this special report airs tomorrow night on Pro News 7 at 10. We're going to talk about organic farming, pros and cons, and give you some more food for thought regarding your diet decisions, whether they're conventional or organic. All right, Shelly, thank you so much.